Hi everyone. Welcome back to Strawberry Knots, Episode 4, where our main character, Sitaro, is currently making dinner. So, so far, there isn't really much going on, other than Sitaro meeting with all these different girls. So in Episode 3, when he went to the Central Plaza to buy food, there were two girls, Asagiri and Isa, who were debating about what store to add, and then they asked Sitaro to give his opinion. On the way back from shopping, Sitaro also met Homi, who was gracefully looking at the park's landscape. But um, now that's all squared away, let's just continue to see what happens next. Okay, so um... Oh, this is it? <laughs> okay, so let's see, he's putting in... Garlic, ginger, um... So the smell of garlic and ginger, it's kind of tickling. Hmm. So like um, after all the material's good and the taste is different. Although this is me, um, I can expect a meal in the future as well. Oh, so somebody's ringing the doorbell. Uh, yes? Hmm, I smell something that tastes really good. So this is the dorm supervisor. And her name is Tiori Tomaru. So her name is Chiori, not Tomaru. Tomaru's her last name. Sorry for the mistake. And I don't, I don't really think the, the main character is really happy with her because uh, she was sleeping when he tried to check in to this dormitory. So he literally had to wait outside until um, she woke up. And she woke up because of the little argument with um, his child friend Itsuki. So, let's see. Oh, um, I'm hungry too! So I want something to eat. Hmm. Well, seriously, um, you can cook it yourself. Um, why do you need... Sitaro to cook it for you? Oh, uh, yeah, that's right, um, so, um, there were various, um, shops at the shopping district. And for some reason, um, she really likes to talk in bold. So it's like, um, what waiting? Can I keep the time of the entrance ceremony and the meeting place an unknown? Um, so, um, let's see, Abusive Ex Officio is also a good place to go. Oh, um, it tastes really, really good, um, it's so delicious, it's so different from the, um, Lunch that I usually buy from the convenience store. Uh, I've eaten that for many years. So uh, we know that she's lazy and she likes to sleep a lot. So obviously there's no time for her to do any of the cooking. And when she's hungry, she just simply goes and buys stuff or anything from the convenience store. Like pre-made sandwiches, pre-made that, maybe microwavable food. Well, who knows? 
Ah, uh, yeah, thanks. So let's see. The person's appearance is not um due to insufficient nutrition. So I just give a little part in episode two where um he basically um, looks at her and he thinks that she's too small, and it's like she doesn't really look adult-like, and there's no way she is the um, dorm supervisor, let alone be a teacher. And it became a little argument, and it kind of went too far, so I had to cut it out. But uh, now he's thinking like, well, maybe because of she has so much malnutrition that she didn't develop pop properly. She just ate convenience store food all the time, um, sleeps a lot, and um, in a sense, um, we know that convenience store food isn't always healthy because um, well, you don't, you don't know what they put in there, and sometimes it's chemicals. But at a minimum, it does not have all the um, required nutrition essentials. I guess it could have been a teacher really, well, more than an appearance. Oh, um, by the way, um, let's see. The class is confirmed on a bulletin board at school by 8.30 on the day of tomorrow, and then it's going to be, um, like the orientation. Oh, because um, Pitt will be paid to everyone at the time, and all the correspondence of the school events will be sent through email. So she's talking about like tomorrow's agenda, about what he's supposed to do. It's probably the first day of his class, and um, he's probably gonna have to get a schedule, and then there's probably an orientation or some kind of like um, assembly afterwards. And it's like, well, I always check the school bulletin board or the pit system for um, updates on the school. Huh? What do you mean pit? What's what's all this? It's called Personal Identification Terminal, um, abbreviated as PIT. Oh, okay. So she gives it a different name, or it's probably named differently. It's called. But what is it actually? Let's see, the main point is the mobile terminal dedicated to the inside of the school. Well, I can see the information in various ways. Okay? Hmm, yeah, that sounds convenient, isn't it? Well, so originally, um, I don't use a cell phone like that, so I don't really understand. I wonder how um, Sitaro communicates to other people. So now he mentions that um, he doesn't even use a cell phone. Or maybe he just uses it to call people. Or maybe he's stuck with um, the um, classic landlines. But it seems easy to have some kind of central communication system. Okay, so she's like, um, well, this thing also serves as a student ID or like some kind of identification system where um, we can basically track you anywhere you go. And um, so as long as you're anywhere on this school island, we know where you are. So well, I'm not really sure if um, I should mention that this is kind of debatable. The fact that um, you can be tracked everywhere you go. And even though it keeps everyone 
or make sure everyone is here or tracks. It can also serve as like an attendance thing. So you have to be on campus to be marked present. But at the same time, you don't want people to be monitoring where you go because that kind of feels like spying. I'm not really sure um, what the school ministries were thinking about when they implemented this system. Oh, um, also one more thing, tomorrow morning, let's see, the last, um, dorm member is coming, but it seems, um, there's lots of baggage, so, um, you'll probably have to, um, help him unload and unpack. Okay, so she's making use of, um, Sitero because he's a guy, so, well, there'll be something that we need help to unpack, so, you do it. Or you help them. And um, I'm just gonna go and oversleep, so uh, you have to be the one that answers when they call. Okay. So now um, he's here, so oh well, why don't you handle my duties? Why don't you go answer the door for me? Do all my stuff and let me just sleep in. I'm not a very good door manager, in a sense. So I wonder what she does that keeps her busy. And she mentions that it's, like, anything related to education. But I think she probably plays games or... Like, um, I don't know, does other things all night. And that's why she can't, um, wake up in the morning. Early in the morning. And of course, um, Tsitero is not happy about it, so they go. So, uh, why don't, why don't you, you talk about, um, oversleeping from now? Please do not casually press on your job without doing it. So they go, hey, uh, so you're gonna go ahead and oversleep and let me take care of your job? Don't let me do that. It's okay, um, well, you don't have much trouble with me. How about you clean the bathroom in the dormitory instead? I wonder if, if that's what she does. That's making her tired. Ah, the job, the work. I'm afraid, I understand and what you want to say, but I'm an adult, and it's an exchange condition. I'm not really, wait, I'm not really sure what she means, but I kind of feel like um, she's probably mentioning, well, I do work too, and because I go clean all those bathrooms, well, why don't you take that job instead, if you want me to take the job of answering someone, or um... Like, be the person that welcomes them to the dormitory and helps them unpack. Exchange condition? But then again, um, Sitter was a student at the school, so what's... Why would a um, employee make a guest do work for them? That's kind of um, ironic. Well, if you do clean up, um, you can um, have the whole bath to yourself when it's time. Okay, so I think she probably wants him to do the um, the hard job of cleaning up the bathroom instead. And he's like, well, if you do that, um, I'll give you a reward. I'll let you have the bath all to yourself at a certain time. Well, it's not an exchange, I mean. It means that, um, it's kind of like a misappropriation of, of, of authority. The fact that, um, yeah, I'm a student. Why are you making me do the housework and all the stuff that is supposed to be your 
job, your responsibility. If it's the last, there's also um, a nice uh, rice dashi out there. Uh, I don't say anything, no matter how I use it, I'll accept it. And I think she's kind of going into bribing mode now. Like, oh, if you do the these jobs, I'm, I'll, I'll give you this, I'll give you that. I'll give you this bonus, this perk. Wait, are you stupid? Okay, so now, um, she's complaining about, um, the fact that, um, well, because of my short height, my, um, really small body, it's really hard to clean because, um, there are places like, where I can't even reach, so, um, it's gonna be really tough, and every time I try to stretch to reach those hard-to-reach areas, um, I get muscle pains, or I overuse my body and I get, um, all these cramps and, um, these pains the next day. Hey, don't um, don't cling um. Well, more importantly um, don't cry like that. All right, I'm not really sure what kind of person. Shiori is, but even though she said that she's an adult, she's crying like a little kid. She's like, um, wait, 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 um, please help me. I do my best. I wash, I clean my teeth, change my clothes, dot, dot, dot. And the fact that I'm short, it makes it really hard to clean because I can't reach all those hard to reach areas. And I'm just going down to begging him and even bribing him to do her work. Ha ha ha. That's natural. Have you ever had that? Have you ever been doing it alone? I don't want to catch a kill because I'm drowning or dying of um, losing my mind. Hey, please, I beg you. I understand. Well, I get it. Well, for now, um. Please go away for now. Okay, so this is a promise. I'll make sure you do it. Um, I do not want to drink the spit that I spit. For now, I'm gonna have rice now. What? So now, um, she's gonna go ahead and eat his dinner anyways. In exchange, she wants him to do some of the dorm work that she does. Wait, why are you crying then? So really making use of someone. The fact that, uh, oh, we have a guy here, we have a male student here, maybe we can make him do some work and um, help keep this place in good condition. For all the girls. So even though um, Sigurd gets all these perks, he has to earn it. And now um, so it's after dinner and he's tired. So he's like, uh, I got tired of um something unexpected. And dealing with a um, dorm manager who likes to sleep in. And complain and cry like a little child. So it looks like he's just gonna go to sleep now. So he's on his bed. So even after that, my teacher did not return easily and try to impose um, even more work on me. So one after another. So I was like, okay, well, you gotta go clean the bathroom. So, well, how about you do this? How about you do that as well? You do that as well. Literally, just um, basically, 
dump all of her duties onto Seitaro and have him handle the responsibilities of a dorm manager. Hmm. So, um, I wonder how she became a teacher. Like, um, what was the personal criteria or what kind of standards they had? Ah, <sighs> it seems like I will not be far from the peaceful um, school that I was thinking about. Hmm. So. Let's see, the club president, um, Aries, um, the Dear South Dormitory, um, they're kind of all busy, and it shouldn't be a... Well, ho I hope not to be troublesome. So I think he notices that the other girls, they all have their own business to do. Um, they're all active participants of the school's activities. They um, do extra activities outside of school. Um, we'll see what they do. Well, it's not bad, um, if it was only, um, little, wait, if it was some um, cute children. Um,. Well, because I moved into a unfamiliar environment, I'm getting very sleepy. And let's see. Specifically, I don't have anything to do tomorrow. Hmm. So, am I gonna go sleep today then? Okay. So he turns off his light. I was still told that other residents will come and will become a tomorrow. I closed my eyes and thought about such a long, my consciousness flew away and I quickly fell asleep. Okay, so it's the next morning, and um, Sejiro just got woken up, and he's like, oh, what's that sound? I heard something pretty interesting. So I wonder if it's the um, new person that he was supposed to go um, welcome and answer. Uh, well, I'm worried, so I went to go see what's going on. Hmm, so you surely heard from this person. Or maybe that girl um, who was going to check in came in a little bit earlier. Uh, let's see, there seems to be luggage around here. And it's probably the person that the um, supervisor told me yesterday, such Yori. I wonder what, what this um, person brought to the dormitory with her, because it looks like she, um, she's wearing pretty delicate equipment. I see a, I see a tripod, and that looks like a portfolio that you use for um, art, so the paintings, and um, so maybe she's um, a photographer um, who does like really big prints. Or she's just an artist. So rather than saying um, that you're holding luggage for um, yourself, 
So she's kind of a small person, but she's lugging lots and lots of luggage. So seriously, there's nobody that will help move her in. And there are many strange bulky things. Well, what's that? Uh, so the one which looks like a structure, a large case, and a bag which seems clogged in various ways. And um, the person herself is not too reliable. Oh, um, I did hear about you from the um, teacher yesterday. So now he's talking to her. So it's like, um, so, um, why do you watch this kind of swing like this? Um, do you want me to lend you a hand? Okay, so now he's talking to her, so come. Like, um, oh, that's a really big luggage. Are you okay? Okay, so now um, she notices our main character. Oh, I'm um, here. I'll help you a little. Well, I'm all right. Well, no, no, no. It's not okay. Um, I have to help you. Yeah, I see you kind of stressing out, having to lug all those heavy bags around. Um, I really should light you up, even though you refuse to. But she still thinks it's all right. Well, maybe because she's so obsessed with trying to, um, well, she's so possess possessive of her luggage. Hmm. Okay, a little bit more. Huh, so it seems I cannot afford it. Looks like I'm gonna have to help you. Um, you just dropped it by the time. No, 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 I didn't drop anything. So it looks like um, he finally feels that um, she's talking so much items that um, she's, um, some of the stuff is actually falling off or the breaking. And he, that's when he feels like... um. Well, I really, you really do need someone to help you, cause um, you're dropping stuff, you're getting tired. And then he knows, hey, um, you dropped this. And she's like, um, well, since when I bought it. Uh, let's see, no, it's not dirty from the time I brought it. The child that is on not honest, though a person tells me to um, help her. So um, I think um the dorm manager knows that she's, she's gonna be bringing a lot of stuff, and probably because um, she knows what she wants to do. And even though she told the main character to go help this new person. Um, this new person just denies his offer, saying that um, he, she's alright, she can carry all the stuff around without any problems. And he kind of feels that um, she's quite possessive of her, of her items. Hmm, what's wrong? Well, I'm not a chicken. I think um, she feels that if she had that someone help her, it kind of makes her look bad, and it kind of gives her the sense that she's weak, and she doesn't want that kind of um, embarrassment. Hmm, chicken or chicken. Um, I was tall or something like that. 
Well, I thought so, but um, I just have a feeling of um, helping out with um, a good intention. Uh, but why is this child so stubborn? Okay, so she falls over. Oh, so there is a problem. So she does catch her before she falls. Hey, you, you did say that you dropped it. Well, look, um, this baggage is important. So, um, you need care for it. Mm, well, thank you. Oh, um, here's another one. Well, um, let's see. Okay, um, something about room. Even though um, I dropped my luggage now, um, it is not really Frank. Well, while I'm not doing it to be thankful, will you let me be kind to you? Let's see. Um, because it's okay, um, I'll bring it here because I'm fine. She already wanted to wake up early just to greet her, except that she overslept. And she's all freaked out about it and she's kind of sorry about it. Wait, um, what? Hmm, so wait, um, are you... Snoki? Uh, yeah, uh, I guess so. But I think of this person is special, and that's why, um, that's why the um, Chiori wants to make sure um, her check in goes smoothly. There's probably something, some, like, um, like, um, something that's very valuable attached to her. Well, um, where was there in the end? Was it meant to happen once it picked up? Well, in the first place, what's the again? And, um, is that some of the schoolgirls getting angry? Uh, well, occasionally. Uh, what is it? So who's that person? So this girl is asking um, our main character, Sitaro. Oh, um, that's the teacher. She's also the dorm supervisor. She's a teacher? I think she's kind of um, puzzled by her appearance as well. Yeah, I understand what you want to say, but um, you shouldn't really focus too much because it's going to cause an uproar. So don't question about her appearance. Hmm, well, it's kind of an ordinary reaction. I thought so. Well, um... Oh, by the way, I'm, I haven't really got a greeting yet. So I don't know who you are. But, um, either way, um, you're a student at this, um... Well, you're a resident at this cotton dormitory? 
Uh, so you must be um, at the same residence. Um, by the way, my name is um, Sitaro um, Hato. Please give me, please give me best regards. I'll give my best regards. Uh, so I am Kusnoki Yao. Wait, so you live in this dormitory, but I thought it was for girls. Uh oh, so now we're going back in circles again. Yeah, I understand what you want to say, but um, I'll talk to you about this later. Yeah, uh, Kusunoi, so follow me to your room and please come along. Well, if the Sword Choice Superintendent says so, um, please go to your room for a time to come down and pick up your luggage later. So, um, okay, I understand. So, it's like, um, so this girl, um, the, so the dorm supervisor is like, okay, well, hurry up. I'm just going to show you your room first. And then, um, Cinderella was like, um, yeah, um, go follow her and take a look at your, your new room. And then uh, take care of your luggage later. So don't worry, um, it'll be all safe. Um, don't worry about it being stolen. Wow, what's this room? Haruta kun got a super VIP treatment? Okay, I guess this is a good place to stop the video. Um, it's gotten a little bit long, but there wasn't really much going on other than the fact that, um, we had a pretty not-so-good conversation with, um, the dorm supervisor, since she's making, um, Seijiro take over some of her duties so that she can continue to sleep and not be disturbed by too much work. And, um... The duties range from, okay, well, why don't you greet the person tomorrow? And then, uh, we'll also, um, go clean the bathroom. And then, there's probably some other duties that the supervisor wants our main character to do. That's not, um, disclosed here yet. And then when you went to meet the girl the next day, she gave kind of a blank response and really didn't pay attention to Sitaro. And even though he noticed that she was carrying too much items, he wanted to help her. Well, he's supposed to. She refused to. And it's probably because the items that she's holding is far too valuable to be in the hands of someone else. Well, that is until, um... Well, for some reason, the supervisor just woke up on time for her. And... Well, I'm just going to just check you in and... Be all set with it. Well, um, we'll see what this girl's up to, because um, unlike the other girls who um, just casually met and greet and talk to Sitaro, this girl's quite reserved and quiet, and probably shy. So, um, we'll see um, what we'll know more about her in the future episodes. And with that in mind, I'll see you later.